May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Guk Audio Mini Podcast. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. Now, uh, the next memory of Shunyu Suzuki in the Haiku Zendo Chronicles, published in 1973, out of the Haiku Zendo, the Los Altos Zendo, where Shunyu Suzuki gave the Zen Mind Beginner's Mind Lectures. And... You know who um, really got that thing going was Marion Derby, and this is uh, something she contributed to the book. Timber Cat got it going first, and went Stanford, Redwood City, like that. And, uh, then it gravitated to uh, Marion's living room in Los Altos. And then in 66, in the summer, they turned her garage into a Zendo, the Haiku Zendo with its 17 seats. And uh, Mary Ann passed the house on to Les and Mary Kay, <laughs> plus her teenage daughters, and uh, went to Tassajara and then sort of became a hermit in the mountains of Big Sur and stayed with that man she hermited with for the rest of her life, uh, and and really was sort of like a hermit. They, yeah, uh, it was. Um, I was in touch with Marion through that time, but it had to be through someone else. That's an interesting uh, situation. But uh, anyway, uh, so here's what Marion had to say. The last time I saw Suzuki Roshi was at Tassajara a few months before his death. I had not seen him for over a year. I had heard that he had been very ill and friends warned me that he was weak and pale. He invited me for tea. In the privacy of his room, he revealed a body and spirit surprisingly strong and lighthearted. I looked out of my window day before yesterday, he said to me, and I saw you. Day before yesterday, I'd been a hundred miles away with no idea of going to Tassara. He continued, but then I said to myself, no, that can't be Marion. That girl is too young. He smiled at me and his eyes twinkled mischievously, but now... I can see that it was you I saw through my window. I talked to Roshi about what I had been doing since I had left Tassajara. I confessed that I was not practicing Zazen and did not ever expect to return to formal Zen training. I was living a simple primitive life in the mountains of Big Sur, learning literally to carry water and chop wood. I had discovered that ordinary people who knew nothing of Buddhism had much to teach me about Buddha. Roshi listened intently, nodding his head now and then. You are much more humble than when I saw you last, so the life you are living must be good for you. I can see that you are healthy and happy, and that is all that matters to me. Roshi had poured much time and attention into my training. He had hoped that I would wear the Buddhist robe and give my life to teaching Zazen, but he let go of my life effortlessly, just as effortlessly as he would let go of his own life a few months later. Suzuki Roshi was not one to cling to life. Suzuki Roshi is not one. 
to cling to death. Thanks, Marian. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. This has been a Cuke Audio mini podcast. I'm DC. Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives coming to you from Sleepy Senor with Doggy Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.